Hello and welcome to Medicine in 5 Minutes. My name is Dr. Moses Kazevu. This is a series on my YouTube channel where we look at medical topics in the shortest space of time. In this episode, we shall look at fractures. Remember that a fracture is pretty much a partial or complete break in the structure or continuity of a bone with or without soft tissue involvement. They may be classified clinically, anatomically, etiologically, radiologically, or using eponyms. In the clinical classification, they may be considered as either open or compound fractures when there is communication with the bone and the environment, or a closed fracture or a simple fracture where there is no communication with the environment. In the anatomical classification, this uses the anatomical site and the location of the bone. Like for example, you could have a proximal, middle, or distal fracture of a bone, for example, the radius. In the etiological classification, this uses either traumatic fractures, which are fractures that happen in normal, non-diseased bones with severe impact. Usually the fracture happens at the site of the impact, which is known as a direct fracture, or it could happen at a distant site where the impact wasn't really put. You refer to that as indirect fracture. They may also happen with repetitive injury to the bone, such as a stress or fatigued fractures, which are common in the tarsal bones of the lower limbs, or they could happen in the diseased bone, you refer to that as pathological fractures, where there are diseases in the bone, such as osteomyelitis. In the radiological classification, some patterns include transverse, oblique, spiral, comminuted, compressed, impacted, green stick, burst, as well as avulsion fractures. Eponyms are pretty much just named after the person that discovered them. So you could refer to examples like Coley's fracture as well as Smith's fracture which are involving the wrist. When you're talking of displacement of a fracture, this pretty much describes the relation of the fracture segments. So displacement may actually be described in terms of translation or shift, alignment, rotation and outer length. When you're assessing a patient who has a fracture, please take an adequate history perform a general examination as well as a local examination but please do not put the patient in undue necessary pain to make your diagnosis. You may order some investigations such as an x-ray. Pretty much we use the rule of twos. So you want to take two joints. You want to take the joint that is above the fracture and the joint that is below the fracture. You want to take two views of the fracture, usually an AP view and a lateral or you could even take an oblique. You want to take two sides the fractured side and the normal side for comparison's sake. And of course, take the x-rays on two occasions or more at the site at the time when the patient presents to the hospital as well as two weeks after the fracture. Then you could order, also order for some investigations such as full blood count. In cases of anemia, you could also order for urea electrolytes and creatinine. In cases of shock and dehydration, you should also do an X-match because this patient may need a blood transfusion. In the management of fractures, you want to do your primary survey. So you want to check that the airway is open, the patient is breathing, you gain venous access, draw blood to send for investigations and for cross match, start running fluids and give them a blood transfusion. If they do need a blood transfusion, offer some pain relief using systemic analgesics, give some broad spectrum antibiotics as well as tetanus prophylaxis for open fractures. For the fracture management, we want to reduce the fracture using either open or closed methods. We may immobilize the fracture following reduction and then perform rehabilitation and physiotherapy. When it comes to the stages of fracture healing, these are going to include the stage of inflammation and hematoma formation, a stage of cellular proliferation, a stage of callus formation, a stage of consolidation, as well as the stage of remodeling. Some complications of fracture healing and fractures include early complications such as shock, nerve and vascular injury, soft tissue or organ injury, tendon injury. Intermediate complications include infections, fat embolism, osteomyelitis, septic wounds, vascular necrosis, compartment syndrome, joint stiffness and contractures. Some late complications include malunion, non-union, delayed union. There may also be some growth arrest in children. There may be osteoarthrosis, joint instabilities, hypostatic pneumonias, pressure sores, as well as DVT from immobility of the patient for an extended period of time. Thank you for listening to this episode of Medicine in 5 Minutes. If you still haven't yet subscribed to the channel, subscribe, drop a like, drop a comment. Until next time, bye-bye.